Hi, this is 365-801 and this is my buddy read with Katie and we're reading Sweet Blood by Se Young Kim. So <laughs> I've literally just finished filming the wrap up for all of these for my um, Manga Freakathon and I'm gonna start this. It's, what's the day? It's around the 20th which is actually when we usually start. Um, I know Katie's already started. She posted on Twitter, although I haven't really engaged at all because I've not been very well. So I'm going to start this. Um, I have the first three volumes out at the moment and I did just read Devil's Bride by Se Young Kim. So that kind of helped me to read in the right direction, hopefully, and get kind of into it. So I'm really looking forward to this because I enjoy Devil's Bride a lot. Um, so yeah, this I don't really know anything about. So I had to have a wee read of the back. <laughs> So it's about a guy who doesn't have a lot of money and I, I think from this there must be some comedy aspects in it so hopefully this will be fun and that's, huh um okay there's a dragon thing in it okay anyway <laughs> definitely feels like there's some comedy in here uh, so that should be quite good so I don't really know very much about it I did start collecting these probably later than I probably should have. Um, when was it published? Hmm, March 2015. So, actually not that, not that late then. Someone else who I used to follow on Twitter, who's not really been active for a few years, was very, very excited when I hauled some of the volumes and they said, it's fantastic, I love it, you're gonna love it, can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. So I'm actually quite excited about this. I still do not have volume 7 so I'm probably just gonna stop filming and get straight on to ordering that because the price I think has gone up which is annoying because if I bought it when I said I was gonna buy it I would save myself like a quid so anyway so here's the first three volumes so I'm gonna see if I can read these today I also have a little package here uh, so I might just open this and show you and I also have some videos from Bizarre Individual to just binge. I've kind of saved up two or three of his videos and gonna see if I can watch them. Um, some hauls and some shopping, so that's gonna be fun. But I also have uh, the video for this to edit as well. It's probably about three or four others that I've started and just haven't finished. So I've been quite bad about all of my um, editing. And I just thought I would show you, um, I do have some pumpkins and chestnuts and things like that um, and an aloe vera plant which is a bit odd <laughs> but yeah so I don't know I'm, I have to go get a pair of scissors and open this so we'll see what I got okay let's see what it is I can't remember I think I know what this is um, but you know it's like is it or is it something else I don't know right that should be it surely I can gain access to... No! <gasps> it's like... <laughs> they did it twice! Wow! That's never happened! Well, that was quite good of them. Thank you, World of Books. Hopefully these are... Ooh! Yes, they are! So this is Band Sinister by KJ Charles. And this is The Henchman of Zenda by KJ Charles. These are... They, they're not hugely thick books. They are quite good print sizes though. A gay romance of the Regency. So that's what this is. I thought this wasn't because it had three characters and I was like, oh, it's maybe not. Because she sometimes does MF romance or FF romance. Or does she do MF romance? Maybe she just does... Well, I don't know. She's very good at all of it. <laughs> she does all of it. And these have lovely, like, matte, velvety feelings. So when they go... Yes, I'm Um, so yeah, Henchman of Zenda, which is a swashbuckling adventure, which I'm very looking forward to. And then a Regency Gay Romance, very looking forward to. These were really cheap. They are second hand, because um, obviously I look to see if I can get the, the best prices, obviously. Uh, so this was like £3 and maybe £4. So that's brilliant, because I think they're about 7 or 11 something like that. Which is not a huge saving. 
and I could get them brand new, but if I could get two for the price of one, then I'm going to get two. So I'm very, very happy about this. Um, I've been excited about these. I do want to get all of KJ Charles's books at some point. I will slowly collect them. So these are great. Very happy about that. So yeah, some books to read, some videos to edit, and there's a Grand Prix later today as well. So yeah, that's everything that's happening today, <laughs> maybe in this video. So I have um, finished reading volume one and volume two of Sweet Blood. Um, the story follows Suho Lee, who is uh, a kind of a poor soul. He's kind of scrimping and saving. His parents don't seem the best at managing money and he lives on his own and tries to um, budget and try and get by with whatever finances he has and he has a very rich friend and unfortunately during the night he starts to notice that he's got um, a sort of anemia and some puncture wounds and then some <laughs> some kind of vampire thing kind of comes and gets him <laughs> Uh, it's not great well I mean it's funny some of it's funny that's the thing it starts off in a really comedic bent but then you're like he has to kind of sacrifice himself to go to, to stop him from killing his friend um, who is kind of a bit of an interesting character I think I like him the most just because he seems so uh, like not interested in Suho and yet there is a an element of I will look after you kind of thing um, and then there's this weird little dragon thing at this tropical island that he goes to so I'm guessing like is this isekai <laughs> this is an isekai right like is this, like a wee dragon thing anyway um, I like this that he's eating <laughs> this the shellfish it's just a weird thing like what kind of he has to pretend to be a girl because the guy the guy's homophobic because of something that happened to him when he was younger. I don't know. It's very odd. But then he kind of knows um, that he is a guy, even though he didn't know he was a guy. And yeah, so the second one, it just said, like, I sound like a crazy person telling you my dream last night. That's what this story is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he's having to pretend that he's a girl. Um, even though the guy knows and then he the dragon and him end up getting to go back to his normal life But then he comes and gets him but the dragon the dragon is um, Pretending to be him uh, For his friend So his friend is looking after him. He takes on his appearance. This is very crazy and then there's this haughty guy with the, the long hair who might be the guy who who made him homophobic because he pretended to be a woman and was like ha 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 I'm a man all along like maybe oh yeah and there's these like the dragon can be human formed or dragon formed and then there's all these guys who just show up who are like oh and the girl like I, I don't know how to describe this story <laughs> it's what I'm saying the the the, the crux of it is, I have no idea this is a wild ride, but I'm actually kind of enjoying it. There's a lot of comedy in these first two, so I'm wondering if the whole thing is very comedic or if I'm going to be proved wrong. I don't know how, how this story's going to go, but it's like, is there a developing feelings between these two? Um, you know, is, is that where this is going? Um, it seems to be that's what he's going to have to. But, but he, Suho doesn't seem like he's gay or maybe he just doesn't know yet because he's still a teenager and then there's this dude who um is very clear he does not like men um but he likes his blood it's delicious and so he might end up having to have some sort of contact with him um just for the blood just for the just for the energy he can gain from him i do like his friend but uh, and the dragon too. Oh, the dragon is quite funny as well. So um, <laughs> he just looks funny when he's in the dragon form, like this. Anyway, so yeah, these two volumes. Uh, it's good so far. I'm going to continue on with it. It's not 
like it's terrible and I have now ordered volume 7 so hopefully it will come and I will be able to um, read that when it arrives. So yeah, I'm going to move on to probably do volume 3 and 4 today. So we'll see what that has to bring. So I just got back from the shops, um, so I'm pretty exhausted. Um, when I was in the charity shop, I found a really good copy of The Secret History by Don Tart for only 50p, which is pretty good. Feels like it's maybe never been read, um, or maybe just once, so pretty good. And I also got um, like a creamy autumnal jumper for only a pound and it's actually from Marks and Spencer so it'll be a kind of oversized um, but hey I'll just make more banana bread so I can uh, grow into it <laughs> as, as you were told when you were a kid you'll grow into it it's fine the only way I'm growing into it is if I keep eating things we're drinking these I, I was in um, what is it savers or something and they had this and I'm just like so thirsty because it's really quite warm outside <laughs> I, I overdressed, I had like layers on. So this afternoon I'm gonna read volume three and four of Sweet Blood. Uh, I'm gonna go put my shopping away and do some tidying and uh, cleaning and stuff. So I'll check back in once I've read these two. Okay, so it's been a bit of time. I'm trying on my, my jumper. Um, it's supposed to be three quarter length sleeves, but they don't, they sit here. <laughs> So they just look like they're slightly short because it's oversized. But anyway, it's comfy. It's really, it's ribbed. Mm -hmm. um, but it's smooth on the inside. It's like interesting. Uh, anyway, I had the cat visit. I have a couple of cats that live around. I, this is like the saga. <laughs> I was trying to do some business work um, on my computer and there's um, a couple of cats. One of them that I visited today is a little black and white one. and. Um, it was all like meow, meow at the window. So I, I let it come in, gave it a wee bit of ham, and then it just stared at me outside the window. So I let it in again, and it just followed me all over the house. So I gave it a wee bit of chicken. So um, it's, I think, gone home. It, I, it just visits every, every house in the neighborhood. Um, anyway, it's super cute. Anyway, I did a bit of business stuff. It's now a little bit later on. It's starting to get grey and, and dull. So hopefully there's enough light. Um, I have read these two volumes now. So, um, oh dear, what's going on? Suho. So he was on the cusp of actually starting to feel something for this Kian, Kian guy. And he was starting to feel not like love or anything, but feel some sort of emotional connection or sympathy. At the same point that Kian seems to have actually developed uh, romantic feelings for him, or maybe just sexual feelings, <sighs> because this this took a turn that I was not expecting. Because these two volumes are pretty fun and silly and kooky. These two volumes take this series in the direction that I was like, oh no, oh no. Um, so yeah, poor Suho, he, oh dear. And this volume, I was like, oh my God, no, no, oh no. Um, yeah, this was, this was a terrible volume. He, this was terrible. <laughs> oh no. So yeah, he kind of sexually assaulted him um, badly. And then he ends up getting sexually assaulted by someone else as well. Oh, And kidnapped and tortured and people want to kill him. <laughs> so bless him. And, and yet this guy, Kian, is uh, at the point where he's like, oh, but I'm in love with him and maybe he'll forgive me. Dude dude you're like sucking his blood and also sexually assaulting him you're gonna have to do more than just you know say sorry you know it's not good it's not good machinations people are machinating against suho and i'm not not here for it although we did get where was it um the lovely uh 
what was his Isaac got all his hair chopped off by his brother or slash cousin in one he's described as his brother but I think he described as his cousin somewhere else uh, like at the back of at the back of book four I think he's described as the cousin yeah Isaac's older cousin but I think in here he was described as his brother maybe it's see see I'm not being just confused. Like, it says that. I don't know. Is it brother as the old, like, Oni-chan? And you're actually not Oni-chan. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just... Anyway, Kian was not very nice to Suho. But what, what, what was quite fun was we got to see... God, what's his name? <laughs> the dragon as a human he's super cute he's a wee sweetie i want these two to get together <laughs> i'm like rooting rooting for the isekai dragon in the in the normal world getting getting on with him because he's he's like you're too gorgeous too flashy um yeah oh the other characters i'm not too sure about um oh dear it's terrible it's terrible. <laughs> so yeah, shit's happened. There's been war. There's a whole goddamn war I'm not even talking about. Machinations, guys. So yeah, I... Oh dear. So yeah, I have read four volumes of this. Um, and I, I swear, this is still like someone's fever dream. And if I was trying to tell it to you, you would be like... Uh, you know, like the kid who's like, and you know how, you know, like someone when you're, when you're, you know what, you know when you, you know when you, uh, uh it's like that. It's like that. I can't, uh, I, I don't know how to describe this series because the first two volumes, pretty fun, silly sex comedy type stuff um, with a little bit of lighthearted, <laughs> see, lighthearted uh, isekai fantasy. And the next two volumes, ugh, heavy. And uh, violent and war and <sighs> poor Suho. So here at the back, I've been looking at these back ones because they're like funny things. Here he is, just being funny. I don't know who these two are supposed to be. Is that supposed to be Isaac and Suho? And then is this Isaac and Suho together? Because at the end of this volume, he tries to escape the evil. Oh man. Ooh. Suho. And he finds a, a body of Isaac in the water. So are they going to fall in love? Are they going to get together? It's kind of been hinted that there's something going on. So Isaac's the one that, that sexually assaulted Kian. <laughs> I'm laughing because this is crazy. Um, and then maybe those two are going to get together? Like, I kind of feel for my poor baby Suho. I just want him to be safe. Can he not just go back home and live with his rich friend who's now born in the little dragon? Because that's how I want the story to go. I want him to be like the cheerleader on the side going, you go, you go little dragon. What's the little dragon's name again? I can't remember. Um, but he's cute. It'll tell me, won't it? It'll tell me. There's a whole character summary thing at the back, which helps, by the way. Kyungmin. His rich friend. I love how he's described it as his rich friend because I'm like, the rich friend. Kyungmin. I need to remember that. Suho, the main character. Kian, who seems to be... Ah, sorry, you've lost lost my respect. And then you've got all these other ones and I love how... <laughs> no name. There is no name for this one. Um, these guys are all scheming and having machinations. They're all his harem. And then you've got the sister, Sienna, who seems to have a bit of a thing for Ella. And then it's Mihar, Kian's fiance, who hasn't really done anything bad yet. She's she's just. Uh, and then you've got Isaac, who looks gorgeous with his long hair, and kind of cute with his short hair. Nick, who it says he's his older cousin, even though it said before it was, it was a brother, who obviously wants to bone Isaac. This is what we know. Okay, I'm trying to explain it. And Luca, that's it, is the cute dragon who's just a cutie pie. And then Arka, who's Ruka's father. He's the only dragon that doesn't have a contract. Oh, seriously, guys, it's like a fever dream. And then you got these guys who are dragons and not dragons. Ugh. She's she's like, oh, I'm so ice queen. And then she'll cry for Isaac. It doesn't make any sense. I hope that Katie's enjoying this. <laughs> I'm not, not enjoying it. I've just felt like it's like two different 
it's a tale of two halves, really. And I'm only on volume four. <laughs> I haven't had the post yet, so no volume two today. I will read volume five and six, maybe I'll, maybe some tonight. Um, so I'll probably check in with you tomorrow for volume five and six. And hopefully the postman will bring me volume seven because I won't be able to read. I won't even read it if I don't have it. So yeah, that's my update. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna go eat some chicken because I bought some chicken and I gave some to the, the cat so I'm gonna have some chicken for dinner um, and I so yeah I have some sweets to eat as well nothing that I can't eat. I've been really bad and I had some milk product and then I was wondering why am I having an allergic reaction? It's because I had something with milk in it. Um, so yeah, a bit tidying up to do and um, some video editing to do and I also have some non-fiction books to read as well that I want to read this week. So we shall see. <laughs> I really don't know about this. I'm wondering how Katie's getting on. I'm gonna I'm gonna text her. So it is uh, the next day. I have uh, now read all of volume five, and I just started volume six, which has a one ninety nine sticker on. So I got a real bargain with this one. Um, so yeah, I went to bed last night having read just the start of volume five, and then um, I woke up at like two in the morning and then four and then half past five and so I was like I'm not getting any sleep I'm in a lot of pain I'm gonna need to just sit down and have some medication maybe sip some peppermint tea or something it's not gonna have any caffeine in it and so I did read at like half past five in the morning the rest of this volume up to around seven that's when I got started in volume six and was like no let's go to bed um so yeah this volume is mostly following Isaac and Suho and their relationship and I don't feel like they have a a real physical like sexual connection so much as they feel like they recognize a kindred spirit in each other like they're like oh you you're emotionally damaged because of all the shit that other people put you through okay I recognize that cool and so I think they must resonate with each other in that respect and so they do feel like they have like a they very quickly start a sort of almost codependent relationship that they they want to or they gravitate towards because of that mutual feeling of distrust and um, pain that they have that is sort of inflicted on them. I still don't understand the whole background story with Isaac and Kian and if Isaac actually did it on purpose or if he felt a connection to Kian anyway um, and he was forced to present himself as female because that also seems like something that is kind of hinted at but not 100%. So I'm, I'm intrigued to find out if that's something that is uh, sort of brought up again in the later books. I'm assuming it will be. Anyway, so they end up having this kind of weird relationship. Kian decides to accelerate his marriage to the lady um, and so invites Isaac, knowing that Isaac has Suho and that Isaac would not be able to leave Suho alone in the the palace where he lives, where he's kept prisoner basically, because then his his cousin, and it is his cousin, <laughs> would Neil would would uh, hurt him. And the only way that he can get Suho is to allow Neil to hurt him. So, um, yeah, it, it's pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, it ends on a bit of a um, cliffhanger when, of course, Kian's like, "Oh well, I'll let I'll let the Isaac go and stay at." my island retreat which is the same island retreat that we started the story with on his resort island and then of course um just as suho is is declaring that he has feelings for him and that they are real um he walks out the room and boom who's been listening in 
<laughs> and who's decided to go to his own resort island. And, um, and you think that's the end of it. Um, well, it is the end of this volume. So that was like a real cliffhanger. I really like, whoa, which meant I needed to read <laughs> the start of volume. Now you understand why I, I started to read volume six because I was like, damn, I'm not going to sleep now. Whoa. Um, <laughs> I did like the little comedy bits here as well. Um, but yeah, so I think it, this is going to be interesting. From what I read, I can't remember how far I got. Not too far. It's not great. It's not a brilliant situation for Suho, but it's not a great situation for Isaac either. But because um, because we don't know so much of Isaac's backstory, we don't have the same level of um, sympathy for him and his situation. Um, just purely because we don't know what happened between him and Kian and why exactly he was presenting as female and, and what kind of life he has lived other than being presented as promiscuous and obviously that his cousin wants to bone him <laughs> and instead is acting out in a violent manner. Um, but yeah, I like the little development of that. There was this extra little story, if I can get to it, um, that involved... Um, the Ryuka's, Ryuka's uh, father um, and the other guy who is um, one of Kian's sort of followers, retainers, that kind of thing. So he met Ryuka's father when he was young and he called him by a, a different name and um, there you go, Asim. And so he had to go find out who is this Asim person. It turns out that that was the first human that he contracted with and his like ancestor and so he doesn't see him when he looks at him he sees Asim when he looks at him so this is a sort of weird um a weird little relationship as well could he contract with him no his blood tastes gross <laughs> yeah so this was a really I think really important volume to get volume five volume three five and seven were the last one so i'm still waiting on seven to arrive so i'm gonna have to take my time with volume six but it's not arrived yet and i don't know when it's gonna arrive <laughs> so i'm gonna have to be like really slowly reading this because i can't just devour it and i want to just devour it because i can't read eight nine and ten until i have seven anyway i got volume three and then i got volume five so volume five is the last volume that i got it's so important. I think volume five is a very important volume. But yeah, volume six is so far. Where have I got to? It it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. It's not it's not good for the emotions and um, the development and a bit of miscommunication and things like that. So I got this first chapter is oof, and then you get um, into Kian's sister's story. So I'm just gonna. Uh, pause here for a bit. I'm gonna have some something nice to eat and uh, Yeah, I, I want to just devour this but I can't not until and I think the postman's already been and gone today So it means I don't have volume seven yet. Maybe it'll come tomorrow <laughs> No, no volume volume seven day one on volume seven watch no volume seven <laughs> um, You wouldn't get that unless you watch Big Brother from the UK day seven um so yeah i i can't just devour this like i want to because i'm gonna have to sit around and wait for my volume seven drive as soon as volume seven's here i'm just gonna like boom the whole rest of the series because it is it's very addictive it's that like this ended on such a cliffhanger so yeah i'm looking forward to finishing this but also just getting everything done and finding out if suho he seems to have come to the realization he's never getting home, <laughs> which means Yuka uh, with Kyung, Kyung Min is just like stuck there living his best life, <laughs> but also utterly depressed because when he's sparkly, shiny dragon person form, um, he's like, oh, Kyung Min doesn't like me. And Kyung's like, oh my God, I want to bone him so bad. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a funny... Like everyone, not not talking, but it's miscommunication in the best, done in the best way, done in the best way. 
So yeah, we'll see how this follows and I'll update you when I've read some more. Hopefully with a volume 7 in tow. So I have now finished volume 6. Um, there's been a lot more development between um, what's going on um, with Suho and Kian, a little bit of a story for Isaac. It's just carrying on with a little bit more development. There's definitely some... Um, I mean, this was a hard first first couple of chapters to read. This was this was hard, <laughs> um, and also um, we've got a little bit of Yuka's story too, which is sad. This is it's just sad all round. <laughs> but what I absolutely love, and I laughed so hard, was this panel. Page that was kind of like between chapters and um, there's Suho looking bad because oh, in any case you have work to do come help advertise these books a little drag 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 and then he just looks down at these three first volumes where it's like innocent <laughs> dress and drag clam bake water ball bamboo pillow collect jewels it's all like oh <laughs> Because this is exactly what the first three volumes were like, which lulled me into a false sense of security. <laughs> He's not particularly pleased about it either. Yeah, dude, I'm with you on that. By volume six, um, there's a lot more uh, oh, emotions all around with people not necessarily not saying their true feelings. There's definitely that, which is the mis miscommunication thing that I hate the most. But their reasons for not saying things are quite apt you know there's they they will say something um which will make another character think oh well i better not say that then and then it doesn't ever get said there's definitely some machinations um it was interesting because suho ended up in the situation that he was in due to um uh, shu i think was one of the characters and it turned out that kian knew what he had done and so Anyway, um, I thought this was quite sad. This is Ruka in the guise of Suho, just seeing all of the produce that his parents had sent him. And then it makes him sad because he misses his dad. Um, and then Kyung, Kyung Min, being best boy, says, just go home then. <laughs> I'll release you, it's fine. Just go and protect him, which is good. This is going to be interesting, but then... Um, then we get some really ominous, ominous, I mean, we've had a few times where we've had ominous statements made, you know, later it turned out, oh, well, well don't, don't tell me what's going to happen later. It makes me feel really bad. Isaac looking great. Looking great. So yeah, this is definitely, um, a difficult volume to read, volume five six well four five and six difficult volumes so the first three are fine <laughs> the next three are pretty bad i've got another danish some coffee um so yeah i finished reading this late last night into the early morning i was um exporting a video so i need to upload that put it onto my patreon and get a couple of other things done so i'll be doing that but my volume seven has not arrived it has been dispatched so i need to wait for it to arrive today is the 26th We've also got Shameless Puck Boys being released tomorrow, the 27th, so I'm looking forward to that because that's the third in the Puck Boys series. But because I can't read this, I'm going to read some of my new um, purchases. Um, now, I've got a new purchase here, but it's volume 4 and I need volume 1 and 3 to complete the set, so I can't read that one. Uh, but I do have volume... 10 of Don't Be Cruel, which still has its plastic on, so I might give that a wee read. And I also have Therapy Game Restart Volume 2 um, that I've been looking forward to, so I can take the plastic off of this one as well. So I think I will give these two new titles that were released this year um, a wee read while I'm <laughs> waiting on my Volume 7, because then I'll have Volume 7 eight nine and ten so i'll have four volumes to read um by the end of the month which fingers crossed volume seven comes because <laughs> I, well i'll read it when i read it so yeah i might be pausing this <laughs> vlog here 
and then pick it up when the book comes. Or I might just give these a wee read and let you know my thoughts because why not? I'm doing it anyway. I've been I've been like yes yes I want to. Also because I have the big st pack a stack of um, books here, all of these, and these are all like the new new ones that I just picked up. And some of them I can't read. I could read volume three of Hijime, but I don't have volume four yet. And then I have everything up to volume eleven, so. Pfft. I need volume 4, I, I ha now have all of Intense, but I'm not going to start that, and I have volume 3 of Deadlock, volume 4 will be coming out soon, volume 5 will be coming out for My Love Mix-Up. The Summit, I could read, it's Lee Young-hee, so it's another Korean um, one, and I've read these before, so they're just in my collection. So yeah, I'm going through these thinking, right, what have I picked up this year? And what do I want to read? Because that was one of the goals for collecting and reading was to actually read what I have purchased. So I'm going to see what I can read um, and what I need to like wait for other volumes for, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's my plan for today <laughs> anyway. <laughs> eat, eat a Danish and wait for volume 7. So it's been a couple of days. I have now... Um, Finished up to volume six. What is today? Sunday? So in the meantime, I've been reading a few um, other things. I just opened and read Therapy Game Restart Volume 2. So that was dead cute and sweet and I loved it as I would because it's Therapy Game. Um, I don't know why it's like this. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> They're just so hot. <laughs> oh no, he's hard. Um, then Don't Be Cruel as well, volume 10, so they're starting to um, create their little life together. And there was a whole thing for Okino. Oh, he's so cute! Um, so I would like some more Okino stories. So there was a lot of Okino in this one, which I'm not mad at because he's cute and he deserves to be happy too. Anyway, um, the other thing is that... Yesterday, I got in the mail a big wad of things. So I got this, and this, and this. And I couldn't remember what it was that I actually had. But I thought, I'll wait because I've, I know that I've got the email from Amazon saying that um, Sweet Blood Volume 7 has arrived. So I think we should definitely open that one up. And I'll open up the other ones as well. Let's see what we got. So first things first, do we have this? Okay, I've got the address on this side, so I'll just have to not show you. <laughs> there we go. So, volume 7, which means I now have the complete set, and it means I can now read the rest of it. So today, that's my plan. I, I'm, I'm planning to read the rest of it today. I have tomorrow, because tomorrow's the last day of October, but I'm now at... <laughs> Volume 7, 8, 9, 10. So four volumes I need to read today. And I'm very, very excited about it. Now let's open up some of these other ones. Because I kind of have an idea of what I've ordered. But I also may have had a couple of little days of... <laughs> and just ordered things. <laughs> Ooh! So I got this. Lynx. By Natsu Kizu. And I got this for, I think it was like £5 something, which is a really good deal. Maybe it was £6, but still a really good deal. Who did the translation? Is it Adrian Beck or Drossel? Adrian Beck. So there you go. So let's go and see what else I got. This one here. Don't actually know. Oh dear. It's never a good sign when there's sellotape. Ooh! Yay! Volume 1 of Cherry Magic. It's quite big. I forget how big it is. So this is a Square Enix uh, by Yu Toy Toyota. Um, I have Volume 3, 
but I do not have any of the other volumes, so I'm behind. Um, and looking forward to it. But yeah, I got it for um, a very good deal as well. I think it was about four pounds. What's the piece of paper say? Four pounds ninety-five. So that's pretty good, right? Okay, and I also have this big chunky thing which looks like it's got two books in it. So we'll see what it is. I might need to check this. Oh, so difficult. There we go. Ooh, I think I know what this is. I do. My Summer of You and My Summer of You Volume 2 by Nagisa Furuya. These I also got for a really good deal because they were from World of Books, they were second hand. These are also Kodansha comics and they're chunky. I've only read the first volume uh, digitally. I have a digital copy, but I'm really happy to finally have the second one and oh, doesn't it just mean that you need to read these two together? Oh, so happy! Another two fabulous titles as well. Very, very happy to have these two as well in my collection. So that's a really good wee pile. So if I put them all together, what have I got? My summer review. Cherry Magic. Lynx. And Sweet Blood. So they're all manga, which is is good for my manga collection because I am being a bit slow on on keeping up with some of the new releases because my focus has always been on um, getting the out of print but if you don't get the new ones <laughs> a couple of years later or if you have like a global pandemic and um, publishing shortage then they become out of print pretty soon so I'm really happy to have these and for really good prices so less than five pounds I think I got these for less than five pounds each as well this one I think might have been just over five pounds and this one was the expensive one <laughs> just so I can read the rest of the series but you know what you got to shell out the big bucks I think it was nine pounds something which is a pain because I could have bought it at one point in time for seven pounds like 90 or seven pounds 80 and then i was like no let's see if i can get it cheaper and i couldn't so yeah this is my little haul which is pretty good but it does mean that all of these lovely books i need to have put to the side and focus on this one so that's what we're doing today so before i start volume seven i'm gonna have a wee um chicken roll they're chicken like what are they called Ch chicken dippers no chicken nuggets but they're chicken dippers um, so yeah, this is what I'm going to have, um, even though I have so much fresh food in my house that needs to get eaten, I'm like, no, let's eat the frozen food <laughs> that can keep in there for months, that's fine, um, but you know, when it hits you, it hits you, um, and Bizarre Individual just posted a new video, so I'll watch that while I have something to eat, and then get stuck in to Sweet Blood. Okay, I've got my washing on, I've got coffee, I've got a couple of almonds, uh, pie treats and some vegan cream. Time to start reading. So I have um, just finished reading volume 7. It's about 5 o'clock at in the evening now, Sunday. Um, so I think I will manage to get volume eight done and then um, <laughs> tomorrow, last day of October, fingers crossed, I'll get volumes nine and 10 so I can say I've, I finished it in the month of October. This was dense, this was pretty dense. There was a lot of story in here. We had, um, oh, the preamble to the wedding where he Suho sees Isaac for the first time. Oof, the tension. And then there was the wedding, the drama, the drama, and then the stabbing. And I was like, oh my god. And of course, he went to go see Isaac, and Isaac was like, then let me fuck you. And I'm like, what? 
And then the wedding, and then whilst they were having the wedding, there was the whole... I knew it. I knew as soon as, uh, as the stabbing happened, I was like, I'm not sure if that's who we're supposed to think it is. And if, if it's not, if it's the other person, then what? Because, <laughs> I mean, I like Suho, but I fucking love Yuka, so I'm not happy. <laughs> And and Ryuka's dad as well. I was like, oh, I love his dad. And of course, the one who's in love with the dad is it Noah? <laughs> it's just trauma, 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 trauma. And the whole time that all this nonsense is going on, Suho is just on a beach because <laughs> he slipped out. The whole party was like, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> bounce. <laughs> and then right at the end, we get this whole introduction of a new blood. And he's a little, a little nonsense. And of course, you're just like, oh, is Kian just putting up with it? No, he is not. He's like, I'll break your neck next. Oh, like, dude, don't, don't play around. This, this guy's not for playing around. Anyway, I thought, I thought it was funny. Like, this is the front cover, and then the back cover is just him on his own with. <laughs> I do like these little um, covers on the back. They're quite funny. So yeah, I don't know what's going to happen next. It just is a saga. I mean, yeah, 10 volumes is necessary because it's just ongoing. So I'm I'm assuming that due to Yuka's dad's sacrifice, and Noah's sacrifice to be fair, he might awaken. And then there's this whole other side plot with the priestesses up in the Sky Kingdom and the crystal and if the Sky Kingdom falls, where does it land? On the ground? Or in the sea? If it lands in the sea, that's fine, you've just got another piece of land. If it lands on the ground, <laughs> it's gonna crush <laughs> one whole land falling on top of another. It's not good. This is nonsensical and there was no Kyungmin, hardly anyway. I think there was there was one sketch between chapters that she did of Kyungmin just suits just for the just for the Kyungmin fans out there, of which there are many, I'm sure. So yeah, um, it's a bit dark now. And I'm like, why is it so dark? <laughs> the clocks went back last night, which meant that when I woke up and I was like, ah, oh, it's only this time. Good. It wasn't. It was like technically I had slept an extra hour. And now that it's like five o'clock, it, it's actually as dark as it would be at six o'clock. Um, is that right? <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm, I'm like, oh, the nights are fair drawn in. <laughs> and there's still a cat on my windowsill. Um, he's been at the window all day. He wants in for ham. I, though, am wanting to make something nice and tasty for dinner, and I'm thinking I might make sweet and sour chicken. Um, just for, just for fun. Just for the fun. So, I might give that a wee go. I do have some coconut rice. No, I think I just want it with normal rice. So I might just make it with normal rice. And see if I can actually make it, because I don't know if I can. I've got an eggplant as well, so I might try and make it proper, proper, proper job. So yeah, I'll show you if I do. And then we'll carry on with some more sweet blood. Oh, and there's a Grand Prix, so. <laughs> Got a Grand Prix to watch. Well, I'm kind of amazed because um, it looks so good. Um, I've got like pineapple and carrot and onion and monge too. And I've got some um, like deep fried um, battered chicken and uh, eggplant as well. So it's got lots of veg. And my rice turned out good. I'm really chuffed with myself. It tastes really good. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely try and make this again. Who would have thought it's actually better to make your own sweet and sour? <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll move on to volume eight after I've had something nice to eat. So I have finished volume eight. I read it last night into the early morning. I've got a lovely little coffee with a bit of cinnamon. And even though it's Halloween today, <laughs> um, this is a minced meat. Um, puff with some cream and I just did it. They've run special. I had to. Anyway, volume 8 I think is like volume 4 
the pivotal moment. So like volume one to three is its own little story and then volume four kind of flips the story and things happen. And I think this volume, volume eight, is the same. It's like things flipping either back or in a different way. So there's a lot happening with Isaac and his story and a lot. This is the romantic volume when it comes to Kian and Suho. It's the volume when they start being honest with each other and actually telling each other how they feel and being honest with themselves about how they feel and still takes a while, still takes a while before they get to that kind of maybe they're honest with each other, maybe they're in a proper relationship. Um, even the author is like, but is it though? Is it? <laughs> like she's questioning it too. Um, and of course there's a lot with Isaac and um, his story and the machinations that he's going through. Um, and of course there's like things in the background as well with Ruka, although we still haven't seen Ruka since um, since he was stabbed. <laughs> so yeah, it was very entertaining, it was good, there was a lot of things happening and yet it still felt like it was very much a story of two parts, Isaac's story and Suho's story. And, um, and I did like um, the inclusion of Pran. Pran is just hilarious. I mean, he's just a sexy boy, <laughs> but he's also, um, he doesn't want to say the things that he's being told to say. Um, but he's doing it. He's, he's doing the machinations just like everyone else, but he doesn't feel good about it. Um, and I don't think it necessarily works, but I guess it does in the end. I don't know, it depends on what character's final outcome or goal is. Like, what do they want to happen? Anyway, it means I am now on to volume 9, yay! So we're going to see if we can get volume 9 and 10 finished today. Because uh, it is the last day of October, I do want to get these done. Their volume, the colour is slightly different. Volume 10 is a chunky boy, um, a bit like volume 8 was kind of chunky as well. So we'll see about how how it goes, how it ends up. Um, I can kind of see how the couples are kind of panning out just from these two covers, so we'll see. I want to get a bit of editing done and um, I've got the washing machine on in the background so I don't know if you can hear that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make some food. I might carve a pumpkin, I don't know, because I might have trick-or-treaters. Every year I get some. So we'll see if I can get some things done for that and maybe some tidying up. It's the last day. I can maybe put all these away. I should probably f film like a wrap up video, but um, mostly it's in the the vlogs. So <laughs> uh, uh. Um, it is a substantial stack of manga and it kind of feels like the 1330 as well. So anyway, I'm going to enjoy this while my, my cream here is still fluffy. So <laughs> I'll check in with you when I've read volume nine. Wow, um, I'm actually tearing up. This is really quite emotional. Volume 9, Isaac's a dick. And yet at the same time, I mean, look at this poor wee soul. I'm not crying, but <laughs> you're not crying, I'm crying. This is really emotional. Oh man, that was, look, look how dejected he is. Oh god, this is harsh. This is harsh. <laughs> I mean, poor Suho. Oh my god. He just gets treated like shit by everyone. Ugh. Pooey lamb. This is harsh. This is harsh, guys. This is harsh. So I haven't quite finished this yet. I'm at, um, almost, almost done. Because this, this volume I am flying through, but I'm also crying a lot. <laughs> the best time to read volume nine is when you're premenstrual and your hormones are all over the place because, ugh. Every every few pages, it's revelation after revelation after revelation after revelation, and it's it's emotional and hard hitting every single time because all of the different it's the payoff. This is the payoff volume. This is the big payoff volume when you get the big emotional hits, and I I kind of realized why I'm enjoying this so much, and that's because this this whole story. Even with all of these extra characters, you know, all of this extra, um, 
nonsense that's going on with the political and the fantasy elements and all of these different characters. Um, when it comes to this story at its very core, it is... It is a, a love triangle. <laughs> And these are the three three in the love triangle. Because most most stories when it comes to love triangles, which I fucking hate by the way, I fucking hate them. And I hate reading love triangle stories because they're never actually triangles. They're corners. You're you're very rarely gonna come across a story where it's a true triangle. And in this case, this has been a true triangle. The story starts off with Isaac and Kian, and Isaac being, you know, long haired, beautiful dresses, as as pretty as a doll, and Kian falling in love with Isaac and them having some sort of romance. And then whatever happened in the bedroom happened in the bedroom and Kian got like no homo <laughs> and developed, you know, a real problem with internalized homophobia and um, became sort of in, in this way very withdrawn when it comes to other male uh, presences in his life and certainly not in a romantic or sexual way even though he obviously does have that you know desire there and and so there's the trauma of their first relationship and his first love and and then you have this relationship between Kian and Suho and a whole like no homo <laughs> but homo thing going on and then you have the development of the two of them who are like kindred spirits but actually they they have this real connection as well and and then the the it's back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth because the whole political shenanigans and stuff and this is the point this is the payoff when all three of them are in the same room together and it's like damn damn oh my god and it was oh oh this is the consumer space is like oh killing me it's killing me this whole volume is killing me because when it comes to a triangle a love triangle they should all connect Kian was in love with Isaac, now he's in love with Suho. Isaac was in love with Kian, now he's in love with Suho. Suho was kind of in love with Kian, kind of not. Kind of in love with Isaac, kind of not. Now in love with Kian and in love with Isaac. And it's just like, because that's the whole thing. Like, they they had their connections. They've had their connections. They've had their... It's, it is a proper triangle in the fact that there is there is relationships going on and it's and it's not always been platonic and therefore you can say it's a proper triangle which you almost never get in any kind of form it's always it's always a corner it's always you know some some one main character who has beer flavored nipples <laughs> or is catnip to the other two characters whether they're male or female it doesn't matter uh, or male and female doesn't matter then then you have this this corner it's that one person who is the central pillar of this you know possible relationship or the conflict there but when it comes to this i would say suho is still the central pillar in this but you know at different points in time they were in different relationships so they all are very very central to the story it's very much you're like I don't actually know who I wanted at different points and at different points in the story I wanted Suho to either be with Kian or to be with Isaac or to just be by himself <laughs> be safe and, and happy god damn it <laughs> and so and there and and I have flip-flopped just like I guess other readers as well so my god this is good and then you've got the whole like the dragon shit thing going on and then you've got Ryuka and Kyung Min who we haven't seen for a long time and it's like Kyung Min and then I lit I literally just got to the the point the point where oh the oh the revelation when he was like shit he's been like chained up and then he was like telling him off and um and he didn't know and he didn't know and it's all like oh god they've all been fucking awful to each other and pure sung who's just a 
Sangho, it's just Suho, Suho, it's just been so, so, you know, put in the whim. And the whole, oh my god, the whole like taking away their memories thing. That's what I said in the in my last vlog where I was reading, I can't remember what it was, Wolf Honey or something like that. And it was the one volume, but it was supposed to be a two volume series. And it ended with To Be Continued. And he'd just taken away the memory. And I'm like, oh, when people lose their memories, it's just, it's heartbreaking. It really is. And it's something that, you know, if you, if you have elderly relatives that have Alzheimer's or dementia, it's a real thing to look at someone and, and have them look at you like, they don't know who you are. They don't know who you are at all. And it is, it is utterly depressing and heartbreaking. And so for me, this, this, this volume, oh my God, this volume. And then of course we just had the whole, <sighs> he died for you? What? Cause you're like, you know, Kyung Min has a thing for Ryuka. Ah, oh my God, this has just been, but does he have his memories gone? Mm -mm -mm. Oh. So good. So yeah, I've just been gushing about this one particular volume. It, uh, uh, volume 9. So I'm gonna have to finish it, but it's half past three and I just, I had so many phone calls to make today to check for things. So I'm, I might have to go and pick some medication up. Um, oh, such a pain in the butt. But I do need to go get it and I'm wondering what time they will finish at and it would be better to go in about an hour so they've had time to process it, that kind of thing. Um, anywho, it is also Halloween and I did have plans to do stuff but I just want to finish and read this. Uh, I need to get a bowl ready and maybe the lights and stuff because kids will probably come round. So I'm just wondering when kids will come round. Um, yeah, so I should probably go and get the medication now. Uh, I'll finish this volume first because, oh my god, oh my god guys, this is the payoff, the payoff volume for sure. Well, Jesus Christ, what an ending. That was... That was a lot. I'd have to say, <laughs> this is, this is like the most action-packed volume of the series so far. It is ridiculous how much stuff is going on <laughs> in this volume. Um, wow. But I do think my favourite bit is when Suho does go back to... Um, I mean, this is just probably my favourite panel as well, when he's like, you know, oh. <laughs> he's he's just been sick, and he's like, oh, are you, are you, t are you two going out? And they're like, no. And he, <laughs> Kyung Min, dead pan, completely dead pan. Oh, I think I just got dumped. Oh, poor you. <laughs> they just instantly go back to being the friends that they were before, which was sort of, you know, like, kind of like comedian <laughs> or Iranian type um, but it's this whole thing of like him saying that they should be because he always misunderstood and thought the two of them were together or that they wanted to be together as a couple it wasn't it was just that he wanted he wanted his friend to be okay because he's a good friend um, anyway this is my favorite panel when Suho is just like <sighs> It's that sitting down and going, um, I'm tired. I'm getting tired of being misunderstood. It's so unfair. We should just date. And then he's like, right now there's this dragon. So it gives him the opportunity to be all like, let's let's clear this up, shall we? And then when he said that he'd seen him as a dragon, <laughs> and I love this line as well. I was so amazed I had to sneak a touch of your horn, which just sounds so funny, but then when you see him <laughs> as a wee dragon. Oh, Yuka. Yuka's just the cutest. Um, but then it did leave a little ominous. I mean, it's just kind of sad. And then he goes into this little sad introspective thing and it leaves leaves Suho. So the rest of this this book, there's no more Suho. Um, it just leaves him in a sort of like oh, dun, 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 ominous kind of way. You're like, well, what? What's going to happen? Where, where is he going? Is he okay? And then you get all of this and it's like, ugh. <laughs> action, action. What is it? Um, club, club, another club. 
not a club, <laughs> not a club. It just feels like it's constant on the go um, plot just speeding, speeding on, whereas some of the other volumes might have dragged slightly. This one is when the when the mangaka or the manhua ga, I think, um, manhua ga, is that what they're called? Um, in Korea. They're like, okay, I've got two more volumes, I've got the rest of the story to just knock out, let's just get it done. It is, oof, this was emotional. So it's almost four o'clock, so I'm gonna head into town, well, my village, the village shop, <laughs> and get what I need from the pharmacy, and maybe pop into the co-op and see if they've got any goodies, even though I've got plenty of goodies in the house. And I was gonna have soup and make kale, I've got like a fancy like butternut squash and sage soup and I was gonna make kale crisps. I might still do that but I'll go and see what they've got if they've got anything nice to buy as well. <laughs> Even though I don't need anything but because um, it is starting to get a little bit darker and, and grayer here. Where has the day gone? At least I did some chores. But I have not um, done the pumpkin that I was going to do. I was going to do a pumpkin. I was going to go walk in some leaf, leaves and stuff like that. But I'm going to go get my stuff, come back. And it's because the clocks have gone. Um, it's starting. You're like, well, it's really starting to get dark already. And it's only four o'clock. Damn you. <laughs> British summertime is great. British wintertime? It's shit. I hate it. <laughs> People are always saying like, oh, summertime is really bad for you. And you're like, no, it's the winter. It's the winter that kills you. Anyway, I have done this. I have one more volume to go. I will be reading it tonight. And then we will be finished. <sighs> right. Okay. I just need to... I just... I feel like I need a m moment. Literally just finished the second. I, that was a cliffhanger. That's like... <gasps> Like if that was a if that was a TV show, oh, oh, this is what I'm saying. It's melodramatic. This is so melodramatic. <laughs> it is like watching Game of Thrones. You know, it's like a whole like bomb, bomb, and and it is a little bit Game of Thronesy because there is that whole like like you're wedded to someone and then there's other people and then uh, and it's all a fantasy world and you don't really understand what's going on and there's this whole culture in the background it is it is epic in that respect um and it's also an isekai <laughs> which is it's fun to know because i can add it to my bl isekai list which is not that long but i'm enjoying the fact that there is now a list of it because it's always good fun to have that as a challenge when you need to read Read an isekai and I'm like, ah. So now I know. Sweet blood is an isekai. There you go. Um, oh man. This, this volume. Anyway, I'm going to need my walk. I've been rambling too long. I'm going to need my walk to get over this volume. And I'll be back and ready. Ready to tackle volume 10. So I just got back <laughs> from uh, the shops and picked up a few things. Um, and got my little bag. Well, it's a little bowl ready with my sweets uh, for the trick-or-treaters. Um, in some of them, it's some love hearts. Just be you. Happy sugar lips. And this emojis now, which is a new thing. They taste the same. <laughs> but as soon as I got in the door, I was like, oh my god, why am I so hungry? And I realised the only thing I've eaten today is that coffee and um, the mince puff thing. So nothing substantial. I was wondering why my hands were shaking. <laughs> I was feeling lightheaded. Uh, so I just scarfed a couple of these. <laughs> like downed half a gallon of um, of lemonade. Just being like so, so in need of something. So I'm going to put on some food. Um, and then I'm going to get stuck into volume 10. I have no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen. It's, it's a mystery. Um, the fever dream has now suspended. It's it, I'm fully on board. I understand what's what's going on. I'm in there. <laughs> I'm actually really, like, really excited. It was a really good cliffhanger for volume nine. So, um, but I'll make something to eat, and um, have something substantial first. So while I was at the shop, I also got some of these on sale. So I thought I'd just sit in a wee.
there we go. Looks all right. Not bad. Um, so I'll replace the ones I've got all kind of scabby. So I've got this um, butternut squash and sage soup. I put some rice at the bottom because I had some leftover from yesterday, so that it's a bit more filling. And then I've got over here some fresh parsley, some chicken goujons, and some bread, fresh bread that I just got. Um, here I made some kale crisps. Now I actually made. <laughs> I, I this is my second batch because the first batch I burnt accidentally. Like they were green, and then all of a sudden they were brown. And these ones are a bit spicier. The other ones were a bit saltier, saltier, and um, a little bit oilier. Um, I like the flavour on this, but I might have to put it in the soup just to <laughs> dull the the spiciness. And here I've got um, like seed to nut mix. Well, no, it's just seeds. It's a seed mix that I've toasted and I just put it in an old peanut butter um, jar and I use it on salads and soups and things. So, um, that's what I'm going to have for my dinner. And I just uh, checked and there is a new Movie Bitches um, video up today. I love Movie Bitches. Go check them out. They're hilarious. And they have been doing all October, they've been doing... Twilight-tober because Andrew has never watched any of the Twilight movies and Avril has watched them all so they're watching them together and Avril is really enjoying Andrew's <laughs> reactions to watching it and then they do reviews and I thought because it's the whole Team Jacob, Team Edward thing you know that's that's the uh, <laughs> from from the ridiculous to the sublime I'm gonna watch that and then I'm gonna read volume 10 so this is my dinner for tonight Okay, so it's a little bit um, late in the evening. I've had a fair few trick-or-treaters coming to the door. Um, I still have like half a bowl of candy, which is not good because you know I'm just going to bring it through here and start jumping on it. Uh, anyway, so I just started volume 10. We've had a few endings and some revelations and, uh, and I'm only this much into it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll make a cup of tea and stuff when I get halfway through because it's a chunky volume. And I'm like, oh, I'm really slowly reading it. I'm taking my time. I'm like, no, I don't want it to end now. I'm fully invested. Um, anyway, what did we have? We have a revelation. Oh, we had we had the, the cliffhanger. Oh, which was a fraud. And it was all machinations, machinations. And then... He finally got to meet her again, Ahine, and and then it turns out that this weird <laughs> thing in the, the crystal is like, oh, hello there, hello, which means he's the new king, um, uh, like of the sky, basically, confirms you as new king of the sky territory. It's like what? And then this Biatch, who I don't even know her name. Does she have a name? She seems to be um, like the one who's kind of in charge because this lady is in child form, even though she needs to be near the crystal because she technically was the queen of the Sky Territory. <laughs> when you're like, so she had a kid, but the kid was a boy and it was supposed to be a girl. And so he came up here anyway with the dragon and was like, Bitch, I can be a king. And they're like, we never have kings. But the crystal's like, nah, you're a king, dude. Um, and then, of course, awful things happen and she gets hurt. And then they have to put her in the crystal. And then she wants to get put to the, the seas. And then we have this weird thing. And it's like, is this a dream? Is this what death is? Because it's supposed to be that she sees him again. Which I'm assuming is the Isaac's dad, the king. Or is it not? And she's a fish. I don't get this. Anyway, that's one ending. A, a fever dream ending, if ever there was one. And then we got... Oh, yeah. Then we got um, Kian's sort of perspective. Because in the last volume, we got told that Kian came down to find Suho in, in, in his long hair all cut up in, in you know battle worn and Suho couldn't be found so he went to Kyung Min and Kyung Min's like I don't know where he is <laughs> and uh, Kian is like I can't smell him anymore 
I can't smell him anymore. And goes absolutely fucking crazy. And I'm like, well, what was that all about? And it was like, dun dun dun, you'll find out in the next volume when we find out why. Um, and it's this dude again. What's his name? Shu? Shu is like the power behind the throne. He is just stirring the pot. He is stirring it. He is cackling, eye of newt and, and toad and frog and all of that stuff. He is stirring a brew. I, oh, he's up to no goods all the time. He keeps sticking his fingers in and fucking things up. I think just because his old, <laughs> old man dragon wouldn't fuck him. That's what it was. This is all the, It all comes down to the fact that old man dragon wouldn't fuck him. He is wrecking everyone else's life because Old Man Dragon wouldn't fuck him and then decided to give up his life for his child because Old Man Dragon is a good guy. Oh. So yeah, that happened. And then we got into Suho and I was like, oh, we're back here. Great. How's Suho getting on? How you doing, kiddo? I missed you. You're looking well. You're working hard. So there's these two old ladies and then you find out this is what his parents are like. And um, they don't look anything like him. And then they decide to ask the two old ladies, hey, can you look after my kid? And they've gone off to fucking Vietnam. These fucking assholes. Suho's parents are the worst. The worst. The worst. The absolute fucking worst. I, oh, oh, I got to this page and I was just like, you are fucking kidding me. He finally makes it back to his own world. He finally goes and like, hey, I'm going to go and be with my parents. And as soon as he turns up, literally, as soon as he's turning up, like, like he, I'm not even sure if he spent any time with his parents. They were like, oh, our kid's coming. So we have to bounce. I don't understand this. <laughs> This is an insane story. Why does he never get anything good? I don't know. These old people are, they seem fierce. They seem like really, really good people. So, oh, Jesus. So I just had to update because I'm like ready <laughs> to eat these, these characters away. Oh, Suho. Just you keep plodding along. Anyway, I've got this much and I really want to take my time. Oh, I want to take my time and I want it to end. Uh, but I'm going to make a cup of tea and probably have a jam tart because they were they were reduced. I think it was like eight or something for 44 p And I was like, I'm having them. Because I've got squirty, vegan squirty cream. So I'm going to have a squirty vegan cream and, and a cup of tea. Mm, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also there is stuff to watch on YouTube and I'm dead excited. Um, so I'm just having, I'm living my, ba I'm my best life just now. Anyway, um, oh, I don't want it to end. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to go get myself a cup of tea. So I guess I'm a liar because <laughs> I meant to get up and I just, I just sat here and read the whole thing. Oh, uh, it feels good, but also I was kind of getting to about this much and I'm like, hold on, like, I, I still have questions about some of the characters. And I got to the end and it was like, I'm like, what? This is the end? And then she says, um, for those of you who would like to hear more of the story, we can meet again in the side stories. Side stories will be a web series mainly about sporting characters. <sighs> Isaac and Sharka, Sen and Shu, Kyungmin and Ryuka, Hien and Suho. So I was like, yeah, where's Kyungmin? <laughs> we haven't had anything of Kyungmin since Volume 9's tiny little bit. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you were hardly in the story, and yet you were like, like, you were always in the story. <laughs> he was always such a presence, even though he was barely... What a great character. Such a great character. The fact that that we, I, I just... I, he was one of my favourites the whole time. Also, this is a big thing. Um, back in the island... Oh, yeah, apparently they have a kid. This, um... <laughs> He's like, who? And then he called him Fran. And I was like, hold on, isn't his name Pran? And now I'm going to have to go and get the other books and, and check. 
In fact, I'm gonna go do that now. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Thank goodness for volume. Oh, I can't hold them. <laughs> Thank goodness for volume four because at the back it had a character guide. And there you go. Look, second place, Kyung Min, because he's everyone's best boy. <laughs> He's everyone's favourite, and um, and there he is, just not been in the story. But look, there you go, Pran, not Fran. But by volume ten, they're calling him Fran, so I don't know if the the translator changed or what. So this is actually quite useful. I do recommend <laughs> volume four just for the character guide because I wasn't paying attention. I I could not remember all of the characters' names. So Noah's the one who's always stirring shit. I have no idea what happened to him. No idea. Then we've got Shu, who ends up in a relationship with Sen. So they obviously have some side stories, because we only got one little story, and I was like, ah, oh, I forgot about that dude. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot about this dude, which means I also forgot about this dude. And then um, Fran, Pran, we don't know. And then this guy, who is supposed to be the lover of Pran, Fran's twin brother, but actually is supposed to be in love with him <laughs> he's, he's just he's getting the short end of every stick every stick and then there's no name guy he was not really part of the story so much sienna and ella who's ella who the hell is ella i have no idea no idea anyway Sienna plays very little part in the story. Uh, Mia, we know what happened to her. Isaac being Isaac. I have to say, Isaac, especially in this last volume, he's so very... Him and... and um, where's... where's... Wow! There you go, Sharka. Sharka and Isaac really should have been on the same page. Anyway. Isaac and Sharka finally get it on and um but then they don't because Sharka runs away because he's <laughs> he's um being silly but Isaac being the now the king of the sky land um and all the priestesses he's become more and more liberatious and that's saying something considering this was him in volume four <laughs> well this was him in like volume I don't know Two and three. This is this is him. <laughs> he, he's more Liberace esque with every passing, which makes me think he's more like a drag queen. And then no Ryuka, obviously, with no Kyung Min. And then what happened to Arka? We we know he kind of passed away. And then Nick, um, I think he got his head chopped off. Anyway, um, volume four is useful for that. So yeah, um, I liked that. <laughs> so stupid i like the fact that um that suho's main priority is that I, once it's it, uh, I, I don't know how to explain this but once he has lived three years in back in the normal world and it's taken three years for he to find him his main priority is that he does his military service <laughs> Korean thing like I, bought, I better get it done I better get it done because I don't want to have to go to jail <laughs> so so he goes and does his military service and Keen waits for him and I kind of wanted more of him with his short hair so maybe that's what we get in the side stories because I kind of think he looks cute like this um, and I also liked um, I mean Kian's always sending and this is the other thing as well. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. So, um, Sharka ran off and hid in a cave. And so, Isaac's having to go and search for him. I don't know. Do they want to have a baby? Oh, and this is the brother of Pran slash Fran. He, um, he's getting auctioned off to the, the highest Sky Priestess b bidder. This was the panel I really liked. The two of them getting all in each other's face. Because Suho grew so much. 
that um, Pran is I don't know Pran Fran I don't know he's he's so much shorter than him now whereas they used to be the same height so when he first saw him he was like <laughs> and also <"Ugh." laughs> so they're having a bit of a bit of sudden a moment and they almost kiss and then they realize what they're about to do and I'm like Suho dude my man. Like, maybe you're just one of those guys who can fall in love easily and also are kind of sexually attracted to more than just Kian. And that's okay because he took you to another world when you were a child. When you think about it, guys, he was in high school. So, what was he? 15? 16? Must have been. And he was on his own. With his awful, awful parents, <laughs> awful parents, just <laughs> who seem to not give a shit about him, um, but leaving him on his own, and he's having to look after himself, and then he gets taken to a, this awful place and gets sexually assaulted. Oh dear, it's just <laughs> look at look at, at Pran so much. He's just <laughs> he just got the short end of every stick. This um, this book. But the last section is like uh, the author trying to tie up the loose ends but not necessarily doing the best job of it. So I think this, I mean the introduction of a dog seems totally random and then there's a picture of a dog and you're like, oh, it's because her friend has a dog and so they like, stick a dog in. That's how random this feels. You're like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> look at Fran. He's just like, oh, I was just here to babysit. But then the dog is there and he's like, this is the best bit. He's like, oh no, the kid's gonna poop. And he's like, well, he's the perfect babysitter dog. <laughs> he's just not there for, for any reason. And so <laughs> he's just <laughs> on his own. Uh, so there's definitely some comedy bits in this. I did think this last volume definitely had like the sweet moments and the 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 comedy and there's a lot of these kinds of things going on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it now at the end. Well, I know that I definitely need a cup of tea and and a, and a jam tart. Um, I thought it was a nice ending. But I also am now desperate to go and read all of the side stories because it doesn't feel like an ending. It just feels like, um, well, it's a saga and there's all these different characters and they all have their own little stories and it, 10 volumes isn't enough to wrap up everyone's story and yet at the same time you can't have a, a an ending that feels like an ending because then you're only having one character or one couple's ending. And so um, you definitely need these side stories. And that's, I think, why so many of the Korean webcomics end up having season one, season two, season three, and then all of these side stories at the end because there's more to be um, shown for these characters, especially if there's a large cast. Or uh, side couples, and I think that's what this has as well. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it feels like yay! I got to the end before October finish. Woo! But now I also kind of feel like, hold on, did I really get to the end? <laughs> because all of this lovely artwork for all of these lovely side stories. Read the side stories, read the side stories, and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> oh, oh, is that him with all his haircut? Which one is he? Sen and Shu? Sen and Shu? Is that him with his haircut? Is that Ryuka? Who is this? I don't know. And now I'm like, damn it, how much is this gonna cost me? <laughs> um,. I hope that Katie gets a chance to read this. I haven't seen this at the back now. You know, Keen buys us time. The dragons are too strong. Oh, 
That's kind of cute. You can't really see very well. It's not focusing. No. Anyway, I do hope uh, Katie has enjoyed this nonsensical farce of a story. I loved it. I had a great time. I really had a great time. This was definitely well worth um, getting and getting all of the, the volumes. I'm very happy. I do need my cup of tea and my jam. <laughs> Tar. <laughs> but I'm going to put this with the rest of them. Um, it's just one of those things that... Uh, yep. Yep. All of these volumes. So many volumes. Let's see, what have I got for? Ten. I mean, ten volumes is a big story, so it definitely feels kind of Game thrones -y. My volume seven I put with my new purchases. I have another stack of new purchases, so that's it. Plus volume seven. And I feel pretty good about life in general. <laughs> That I managed to get this completed in October because um, I did such an appalling job of September, um, which I did not read Challengers in. So, boo. So, yeah, I'm glad I got this 10 volume series done, and I hope Katie enjoys it as much. I know we've been chatting back and forth up to volume, up to volume 7. Um, well, up to my, I think it was up to volume 8 or 9 when I was last chatting to her. So, I'll have to let her know that I finished it and I feel good. Um, so yeah, if you have read Sweet Blood, I would love to hear your thoughts as well. It's very late now. I don't think I'm getting any more trick-or-treaters so I can eat the rest of the candy. Yay! <laughs> Which I'm not supposed to. And watch some YouTube videos. But, um, that's how my evening's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Sweet Blood, if you've read it. Um, or if I've convinced you to give it a go. Definitely. The first three volumes, a lot of fun. The next three volumes is just pain, and then the next two volumes are building up of tension, and then and then it's just boom at the end. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Ugh. And it's great, it's great. So I'm, I am going to see if I can read some of the side stories at some point. At some point. Maybe not tonight. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, I three six five eight one and I make videos about real manga, yeah we uh Mila Romance and all that good stuff. Um if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I know it's the mo not the most exciting vlog that I've done, but hey, when you've got ten volumes to read, I can't really squeeze too much in and this video's gonna be massively long already. Anyway. But I hope you did enjoy it. Uh give it a thumbs up, subscribe like, comment, all of that, all of that, social stuff. <laughs> Take care everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!